in this video, I'd like to walk you through an example of configuring and verifying destination NAT on the Palo Alto firewall. And once again, we're going to leverage an existing configuration that already exists as part of the 0 to 60 playlist. And we're just going to add on top of it. So let's imagine we have an additional interface here that we're using. Let's go ahead and use 1 slash 2. And let's connect that to the network 10.30.0.0 with a 24-bit mask. And let's go ahead and associate that with a zone called the DMZ. So we add that here, I'll put a little yellow, and that'll be the DMZ zone. And let's put a server there at dot one hundred. I've got a little Windows server running IIS, providing basic web services right there. So its address is 10.30.0.100. So for this demo, as we talk about destination NAT, what exactly does that mean? Well, destination NAT means that on the initial flow of traffic, let's imagine we have a client out here on the internet who's trying to reach a server that's located on this DMZ. When that client initially connects to whatever globally routable address we use for that translation, on the initial flow of traffic, we're going to take that destination IP address and swap it over to this destination IP address of this server. And then when the replies go back from the server, it's untranslated back to its original address. So the concept of destination NAT means we're swapping out the destination IP address on the initial flow of traffic. So as far as a game plan, here in my lab environment, let's use 23.1.2.100. And if a client does connect with HTTP to that IP address, what we want the firewall to do is to swap out the destination IP address over to this one of 10.30.0.100 for the server and then forward the traffic. So in addition to having our destination app policy rule in place, we also need to set up a security policy rule that permits that flow of traffic. So for our security policy rule, let's allow ping traffic and SSL, which effectively is HTTPS, and we'll also allow web browsing which in the Palo Alto world represents HTTP traffic with TCP port 80. Now, before we demo this configuration, I also want to point out a couple of slight differences between the NAT policy, which is doing the address translation, and the security policy. That's allowing the traffic to go through. In the NAT policy, when we go to the tab for the original packet, we're going to talk about the source packets and source information before any translation has gone on. So that would include this globally routable address that goes to the server at 23.1.2.100 and the client's IP address. So I'll jot down pre-NAT there. And also from a routing perspective, all those IP addresses, the client's source IP address and the destination IP address of the server, all those addresses are associated with the outside zone. So in the NAT rule, regarding the original packet, we're going to specify the pre-NAT addresses and the pre-NAT zones. So as an example of this, for the original packet, the destination would be the 23.1.2.100 address, that's the pre-NAT IP address, and that pre-NAT IP address is associated with the outside zone. Again, just think of it from a routing perspective, if the firewall was going to forward to that IP address, which interface would it use, and based on that interface, which zone does that interface belong to? And this topology is the outside zone. And then for our security policy rule that permits that traffic on the source tab for that security policy rule, we're also going to use pre-NAT IP addresses. And for the destination tab, we're going to be using pre-NAT IPs. But for the actual zones involved for permitting that traffic, we are using the post-NAT zone. So whatever zone this IP address of 10.30.0.0 is really in, in this case, it's going to be on our DMZ. That's what we specify there. So pre-NAT IP and post-NAT zone for the security policy rule. And I just realized that I don't have this 1 slash 2 interface currently set up. So let's set up this 1 slash 2 interface on the firewall. And then we'll proceed to set up the destination NAT and the security policy. And then we can test it from a client here in my lab environment on my little pseudo internet right here. So here at the firewall, let's start by going to network and to interfaces. And with the Ethernet subtab selected, I'm going to use Ethernet 1 slash 2. So we'll select that. We'll specify the interface type is going to be a layer 3. So we'll select that from the drop down. The virtual router it's associated with is our virtual router and the security zone is going to be the DMZ. It doesn't exist yet. So we'll click here on new zone and we'll create it. We'll name it DMZ, click on OK. And then for its IPv4 address, we'll click on the IPv4 tab here, click on add, and we'll give it 10.10.0.19 with a 24 bit mask, just like that. And also just for grants, let me go to the advanced tab and let me associate a management profile that allows pings. So we can do some basic connectivity testing should we need to. And then we'll click on OK. All right, so that's in the candidate config. I also am physically going to plug in this port, 1 slash 2, into the appropriate VLAN supporting the 10.30 address. Oh, look at that. I got to put the right address there. Let me edit that one more time. 1 slash 2, force of habit. We'll go back to IPv4 and we want 10.30, not 10.10. .10. Because if I try to use the 10.10 address space twice, and I'm not using virtual firewalls, it would complain that the same subnet is being associated with two different interfaces. All right, that looks better. We'll click on OK. 
And before we're done, I'll also physically plug that 1 slash 2 into the VLAN 30, which is supporting that 1030 network address space. So now that we have that interface configured, let's configure the destination NAT and also the security policy rule to allow traffic from a client out here on the internet to reach that server via this global address. So let's begin with our NAT policy. So we'll click on policies. On the left, we'll click on NAT. And here we have some source NAT from previous videos. So we'll click on add and we'll create a new destination NAT rule. And I'm going to name this DNAT for server. So for the original packet, everything here is going to be based on pre-NAT addresses. Think of the global address space 23.1.2, et cetera. So let's click on add here. The source zone for that address space would be the outside zone. And the destination address would be our server. So I'm going to add that next. We'll click on add. And I'm just going to plug it in at 23.1.2.100. We could also create an address object, no problem. The source address could be anywhere on the internet, so I'll leave that as any. And for the destination zone associated with this destination address, from a routing perspective, that would also be associated with the outside zone. So we'll click here on the drop down, select outside, again, pre NAT zones and pre NAT IP addresses on the original packet tab for NAT policy rule. And for the destination interface, I'm going to say it's coming in through service provider A on Ethernet 1 slash 4. And over here in the destination address translation section from the drop down, we'll say static IP, and we want to map that to the internal address of 10.30.0.100 and click on OK. So there's our destination net rule. And then secondly, we want a security policy that permits the initial flow of traffic if it's ping, HTTP, or HTTPS. To do that, with policy still selected, we'll click on security on the left and we'll create a new security policy rule that allows that initial flow of traffic from the outside over to our DMZ. So we'll click on add and we'll call this permit to server on DMZ. So here in the source tab, we're going to specify pre-NAT information. So the client would initiate their traffic coming into the firewall on the outside. Their source address could be anywhere on the internet. And here on the destination tab, we're going to be using the pre-NAT IPs for the destination address, but the post-NAT zone. Think of the zone here in the security policy rule, like the zone where that device, that server really lives. So for the destination address, we'll click on add and I'll do the pre-NAT IP address, which is 23.1.2.100. That's the IP address of our server and the post-NAT zone, which is the actual zone where the server is, which is the DMZ. And for the application, we'll allow ping. So we'll click on add, type in ping. We'll click on add again, we'll allow SSL, select that. And let's also allow web browsing, effectively HTTP. So we'll do web dash browsing and select that. And we'll use the default ports associated with those applications. And we'll click on actions and we'll allow that. And we're doing logging. Great, great, great. And we'll click on OK. So in our security policy rule, we're permitting ping, SSL, and web browsing if traffic is sourced coming into the firewall on the outside zone. And that traffic is going to the DMZ. And then for the destination address, it's the global or pre-NAT address that maps over with the destination NAT over to our server. So let's go ahead and commit that. And we'll confirm that with another commit. And what I'll do is I will plug the port Ethernet 1 slash 2 into VLAN 30. All right, that commit is done. Let me click on close. Let me also just go back to network. And we'll click on interfaces and Ethernet. So I'll verify also that port is now up and ready to go. So here from the client, let's do a test to 23.1.2.100 to verify that both our destination net and our security policy rules are working to allow initial traffic for ping and HTTP from this client to the server on our DMZ. So here is a client computer. Let's verify its IP address with an IF config. This is a Linux computer and it is at 23.1.2.61. And let's see if we can ping the global address that leads down to our server. That's at 23.1.2.100. Press enter. And survey says it's working. Fantastic. So those pings are flying. We'll go ahead and do a control C there. Let's also try a browser. So we'll open up a browser on this client computer and we'll go to 23.1.2.100 press enter. And it should be the web page for Internet Information Services, which is the default page on my web server on that DMZ. Fantastic. So in this video, we've done three basic things. We set up a DMZ. We set up a destination net rule. We also set up permissions to allow that destination net to be used. And I look forward to seeing you, my friend, in another video very, very soon.